Hey man, you know what I like? Outfits. And really, character design in general. I got my degree in studio art with a painting emphasis, and basically everything I learned during college, I put into character design. Designing characters is what I like to illustrate the most, and Ruby has made a major impact on that. When the red trailer came out back in 2012, I was still just a junior in high school, but the sleek use of color and silhouette immediately grabbed me and I started trying to learn how to utilize such color theory and composition in my own art before I even knew what those terms meant. I've already talked about why Team Ruby's original looks are so great in a previous video, and I don't want to repeat myself too much for this one, but I wanted to bring up their initial impact on me to help explain why I care so much about what clothes these kids put on or how they style their hair. This sort of thing matters for a visual medium, and thinking about Ruby's designs too much has helped me get to where I am today. And where I am today is talking about our hero's newest iterations from Volume 7. With the start of the Atlas arc, the whole gang has some fancy new duds, and honestly, I've really struggled to figure out how I felt about these new designs. Hopefully by the time I finish this script, I'll have a more concrete opinion to explain for this video's conclusion. So to get to that conclusion, let's shut up about my dumb backstory and get into the real meat of this video, overanalyzing the cast's designs, starting with... Yeah, so this volume's kinda odd in that almost every character got a new hairstyle. Nora's cut her hair back to being shorter, Blake chopped most of her hair off, Ruby's given herself a fashionable windswept look, Weiss and Ren started braiding their hair, Jean's hair has finally gotten out of the 2000s. The only kids who didn't change are Oscar, who didn't get a new outfit, and Yang. This is a pretty big shakeup for the look of the show. Almost no one has kept their iconic silhouette, and with six out of eight heroes changing their looks so dramatically all at once, it feels a bit like taking a turn too sharp. While it's not bad to change the core design elements of your character, it usually helps to keep them consistent. Usagi keeps her pigtails even when she dons a disguise, Edward's change from braid to ponytail still keeps the silhouette the same, and of course there are exceptions. Bulma's hair changes in every arc and no one's really complaining about it. But for characters like Bulma, who do change so drastically so regularly, it's done to either facilitate a character gimmick or fan service, which is fine but just not really seen in Ruby. Often big changes to designs are motivated by character, acting like a visual representation of their major development. And I think that's my issue with the new hairstyles in Ruby, that they seem to be simply changed for the sake of change, as opposed to having a character motivation behind them. Nora's change is pretty minor, just a short trim back to how it used to look before they were on the road for a couple months. I'm a bit distracted on why she didn't cut it when they got to Haven, but whatever, no need to split hairs on this. <laughs> uh. Ruby's windswept look is cute and fits her speed-based moves really well, but what prompted the change? Just wanted to part her hair differently? Why does Blake cut her hair so short? We just see her looking in the mirror for a sec with a let's do something a little different expression. Cutting it after finishing her shit with Adam would have been trite, but at least it would have been something. Ren's braid is uniquely weird in that it's consistent but in relation to when he was still in school. This looks like a regression back to him being less experienced after the big change we saw last time into Adventurer. Unlike Nora, Ren changed a lot at the start of Volume 4, which coincided with his arc for the volume, so jumping back to what he used to look like feels less like keeping with a preference and more like a step back. Weiss really dramatically changes, completely changing her slick ponytail to a thick, chunky braid and totally altering her bangs to frame her face way differently. Why? I just can't see why Weiss decided to do this. Throw whatever headcanon you want at it, it's still just headcanon. The only one given a real excuse is Jean. Homeboy's been pushing his hair out of his face for years now, and quite frankly, this new look helps him stand out from the sea of boys with the same messy do. So yeah, I don't hate their new hair simply because it's different, but rather because I can't see any reason to do most of it. It feels like they're doing their best to alter the kids from what they were originally designed to be, for no reason, and I just don't get why. Change equals growth, I guess, but I wish it was more clear how growing prompted this change. But I think it's time to narrow our perspective a bit so we can really get into the nitty gritty on each of these new looks. So let's start with... I really like Ruby's new look. The giant boob window and ridiculous sleeves have been replaced with some actually sensible clothing. I miss the cute poofy skirt though, as her new silhouette is a lot less dynamic now. But overall, it feels appropriately warm for Atlas, relatively protective, and fits her color palette really well. 
Last volume's look felt like they had forgotten she was supposed to be red like roses, but this time there's plenty of reds in the design without it becoming too much. Though I will say that there's a problem in the production of her design. So since, like, volume 4, Ainley insists on giving Ruby tanned skin. So in her concept art for volume 7, Ruby's gray shirt acts like a cool colored compliment to all the reds in her design. Except in the show, Ruby's about as colorless as paper. Ruby's pale skin tone makes the cool pop become washed out and puts a weird amount of emphasis on her arms and face. I know this slight color variation may not seem like much, but this plays a huge factor in character design. Concept art version has excellent color theory. In show version, looks ashen and sickly. Either Ayn Lee needs to start actually coloring Ruby's skin tone to the proper pale hue, or RT needs to start following Ayn Lee's colorations more closely so as to avoid these sorts of mishaps in the future. Weiss's design is too dang much. A lot of weird volume with her poofy jacket sleeves and braid makes her top heavy, but the shitload of belts and pouches on her waist draws the eye to all that messy detail, and the pop of red seen on the inside of her skirt just continues to draw the eyes away from the rest of her. There's simultaneously nothing to focus on and too much to look at with Weiss. Unlike Ruby's changed skirt, I actually like this new silhouette for Weiss, as it feels like a more mature version of what she already had going on, and she still has that wide bell shape in the look, which helps a lot. Why is she wearing so many blues? What happened to her representing the color white? I'm glad we finally veered out of the shitty swatch of gray she's been stuck in, but in terms of representing her designated color, this outfit's just as bad as Volume 4's. This royal blue is nice, but why is it the primary color on her? Shouldn't it be an accent? And why is it only found in her jacket? Her design feels so lopsided by not incorporating that bright-ass blue anywhere else on it. Slap that into her shoes, guys. Balance it out. I like the idea of Weiss having her red accents back now that she's reunited with her friends, but really this execution of it feels little more than simply being an idea. We almost never see the red inside her overskirt, and the red jewels in her earrings and tiara are too small to make an impact. A valiant concept, but a failed execution, I'd say. On the topic of failed executions, let's jump back into Weiss's hair. On top of the out-of-nowhere change to her look, the braid just does not look good. It's really bulbous and wide, looking more like rope than hair, and especially near the top, it's got so much mass that it sort of looks like it was rushed out. I hope they'll think about fixing that for the next volume. Also, as a minor nitpick, I wish her bangs went the other way. While the show's literally never addressed her scar, I would assume she'd want to sort of hide it under her hair. Maybe she's putting it on display to show her defiance against Jacques? If we were privy to why she changed her hair so drastically, we wouldn't have to wonder about it. Weiss's new design is overall serviceable, but feels like whoever designed it didn't really have any ideas and just came up with something random for her. Blake similarly feels like a case of, she needs to change, but I don't know what to do with her. And the shittiest part about it is that she's just been re-outfitted with all the worst elements of her last design. Restrictive looking sleeves, ew. Giant dumb coattails, yuck. Giant heels that are bad for being a ninja, blech. And a fuckload of white, Hleh! Points for consistency, I guess, but this doesn't feel like an improved loadout. This feels like a shitty rehash of the garbage design Blake was just in. They just took the menagerie outfit and swapped the aesthetic to cyberpunk. The coat looks stiff like she's limited on movement. Her coattails muck up her silhouette around her legs. These heels look so bad for combat. Why is she wearing so much white? In the past, incorporating white was basically a necessity for Blake, because otherwise her torso would get lost in all her hair. But she cut her hair! You can put her in as much black as you want now and keep her figure easily recognizable. But instead, they completely ignore their own color palette for the character to just cover her in Weiss's color. I mean, look at how great this edit looks. She looks sleek and it has the purple really pop. Why is Rooster Teeth afraid to put the character representing the color black in black? I'm also going to talk about something unique with Blake, and that's her model. I'm not a character modeler, so I don't know how it works, but there are some elements about the model that hurts the design that I want to mention. First, her hair. Again. Cutting it is fine, that's whatever, but the way they model it is super ugly. <laughs> It's just a blob of dark gray dripping down her head. There's no style, they just lopped off the bottom part of her hair in the engine and called it a day. And the worst part is that every illustration of Blake has her hair cute and styled to frame her face, and the in-show version fucked it up. 
Now, luckily, RT's already stated that they've tweaked Blake's model for the next volume, but the image they've shown has her in motion, so it's hard to tell what they've done to it, but I'm hoping her hair will look a bit less sloppy for volume 8. The other thing about Blake's model isn't actually something I noticed at first while watching the show. I've recently made a video discussing how boringly similar the character models all look in the show, and within the mountains of people insulting me or saying that representation doesn't matter, I noticed a recurring element of people saying Blake's boobs had gotten bigger in Volume 7. They looked the same to me though, so I decided to find out why people were saying they were bigger, and I think I figured it out. People kept mentioning this scene where Blake and Ying talk in the truck, and yeah, those titties are... <laughs> accentuated, and I think the reason people were so distracted by them is that Rooster Teeth modeled Blake's catsuit to be literally skin tight. In reality, we should see some fabric stretched between her breasts, and admittedly, fudging the rules on catsuits and physics is nothing new, but I think changing this a little bit in the future may help keep her assets from being so distracting. But anyway, Blake's new look blows. They just recycled her last outfit and covered it in dumb zippers without considering how to actually improve her design. Yang is neutral positive? She's got her old silhouette back, which is nice, but it just kind of lacks a bit in terms of having any wow factor. I think it would help if her jumpsuit was tan and not this poopy gray-brown that they got going on. Similar to Ruby, Ainli tends to give Yang's skin tone more color than the actual show, resulting in another washing out of her colors. I don't love how not warm Yang's look is. Like, she's got the jacket but refuses to zip it up despite only having a tube top on underneath. And with having her thigh fashionably exposed, it just sort of looks like Yang's not taking the cold environment very seriously. I also think it's kind of weird how many similarities Yang's new look has with Vernal. I'm assuming making parallels between these two wasn't an intentional decision by RT, but it does still end up raising some eyebrows, you know? Yang is, however, the only member of the team that actually has some of her teammates' colors incorporated into her design, or at least the only one that does it well. The white fur on her coat, the stark black elements in her belt, it seems Yang's the only one who remembered the girls are a team and should be designed to look good together. Overall, I'm not wildly impressed with Yang's new getup, but I'm also not disappointed by it. It's one of the stronger designs of the volume for sure. Figured I'd actually talk about Ranger this time around, so let's start with Ren. Not a fan. I've already talked about how his hair makes him look like he's regressed in terms of design, but for the rest of his look, it's just a cluttered mess. What's with all these crossing lines on his torso? Why is there so much shit on this arm? What's his primary color supposed to be? Ren looks haphazard, like whoever designed him had no idea what to do and just threw everything they thought of onto the page. And what a downgrade this is from his last look. He looks inexperienced and unconfident. Hell, the new model even makes him look younger. Looking at Ren's two most recent designs is a perfect showcase for less is more. Another too much design. What's with all these lines and layers and colors and why is it such a departure from her previous looks? She's had this cute modern thing going on with her bomber jacket and pink skirts. Why have we suddenly shifted into high fantasy? This is a total deviation to what she had been wearing and so lacks any feeling of growth. By completely altering a character style, you just drop whatever development we had seen in their previous iterations. Added a coat for more protection, got higher boots for more comfort during travel, ditched the restrictive looking metal corset, and now, uh, got really into Tales of Graces? It looks like she was styled to look like she was in Atlas, as opposed to be styled to show how she's developed over the past three volumes. Jean, hands down, has the best new look for Volume 7. Across all new outfit changes, Jean has stayed consistent while clearly growing with each iteration. I don't know why they only do this with Jean, but he gets the lucky distinction of always getting upgrades added onto his design. Volume 4, got better armor and shoes. Nice. Volume 7, got a haircut, a streamlined jacket without the hood, more protective looking pants, and even better shoes. Radical. He's only going up. He gets minor changes that actually show how he's adapting to the environment and changing as he gets better on the field, while the rest of the cast just jump into completely different looks every three years. I'll take a second to talk a bit more about his hair. It had gotten a lot of ridicule when it was first revealed and I absolutely partook in that bandwagon. However, as the volume went on, I got more used to it and have come to terms with the new style. My only real problem is that it's styled up. 
Jean's hair has always been very downward facing, and I suppose it being up like this could signify how he's finally stopped moping over Pyrrha, which is fine, but it's just a very dramatically different look to jump into. It'd be like if Nora styled her hair to be straight down. We've always seen it curl up, so it'd be kinda jarring and weird. I guess I just wanted to figure out why so many people hated his new haircut at first, cause it's not just that we all hate change. I found these edits of Jean and they look great. If he'd come out looking like any of these, I don't think there had been as much shit slinging due to them keeping his hair a bit more in line to how it's previously been. Personally, I'd have given him a ponytail, because Pyrrha had one and Jean's design should echo hers a bit, but what we got ain't bad. Jean mops the floor with how well they design him each volume. I wish all the other characters got the steadily getting better equipment treatment he gets. His colors are consistent, his silhouette is consistent, his growth is consistent. Jean wins best new look. The biggest problem with the designs for Volume 7 is how totally unconnected all the kids look. Ruby and Jean feel like they still belong in the world of Remnant, Ren belongs in a cyberpunk show, Yang's wearing normal, modern clothes, Weiss is dressed like she's in a high fantasy, Blake just jumped out of a futuristic spy thriller, and Nora's cosplaying as a Tales of character. They look ridiculous standing next to each other. I could grab a random lineup of characters from unrelated properties and get just as much cohesion in the group as the show currently does. And this has been a building problem for a while now. Back in volumes 1 through 3, Ruby was a modern fantasy. The kids wore stuff you could theoretically buy from the store with few alterations. Monty loved cosplay and so wanted his characters to be easy to cosplay for. But then volume 4 happened and we started to lose the script. This high-tech fantasy world with guns and airships suddenly crash-landed into traditional fantasy. No one had a gun anymore, side characters were given simple, traditional clothing, and the very idea of the holographic streetlights we'd seen at Beacon was completely left at the wayside. Ruby's world changed genres as Beacon fell, and the characters' designs began to suffer for it. Some of the cast kept the modern looks, some went more traditional like the background characters, and the only way they knew how to make their outfits look like fantasy was to cover them in belts, and this lack of focus has only gotten more prominent with Volume 7. Put Nora and Ren next to each other, and I bet most non-viewers wouldn't even know they were from the same show. Yang looks ridiculous being in the same shots as Weiss. Hell, Weiss looks ridiculous standing next to her entire family. A bunch of modern, normal suits, and then a fucking Disney princess. Ruby has no style, and the character designs suffer for it. The showrunner slapped a random genre onto each kid and didn't bother to care that the group looks totally disconnected from each other and like complete aliens to the rest of the world. I hope that the the next time the kids all get new outfits, Rooster Teeth has figured out what they want this world to feel like, so that way our protagonists can not only look like they belong together, but also so they can look like they actually belong in the show. Before I wrap this up, I kinda just want to rapid fire some thoughts that don't really fit anywhere else in the video. I guess think of this like a bonus round. Alright, so... Cinder's outfit is too damn dark and has too much black. Her limbs all blend together into a blob. I like Penny's long hair, but the curls framing her face look kinda weird. I wish she had another layer in the middle. Why did Winter and Ironwood get new outfits when their old ones had so little screen time? Watts' coat is sick. I wish we got to see it more. While I like the Aesop's uniforms, it means they're really lacking in terms of color. It doesn't help that their designs are basically all just a bunch of shades of brown. Why do the Happy Huntresses all wear the same outfit in different colors? Feels less like uniformity and more like it's just lazy. If you're going to bring up classism so much this volume, why would you design Weiss to lean in on the princess slash heiress look? She's been ostracized from her family, so why keep the royal design for her? I wish Yang's hair was longer, like how it used to be back in Volume 3. If you're gonna have a Robin Hood character, why would you put them in so little green, and why would you make it a poopy barf shade of green? Mae Marigold has this really cool braid and makes me want to see her do more. Why doesn't Blake have gold accents in her outfit? She's dating Yang now, isn't she? Put some of her girlfriend's color on her. I like that they forego making Harriet a faunus and instead simply imply bunny ears with her hair. It's cool. While the beard eventually grew on me, I still prefer Ironwood with a 5 o'clock shadow. That one's just a personal point though. Salem's new look is so similar to her old one that my friend hadn't even noticed she'd changed. Why make her a new design if you're gonna do so little? Just wanted to give her a bigger titty window? If Yang, Penny, and Cinder can have such stark blacks in their designs, why did they insist on putting Blake in this purpley blue? Just have her wear black, fam. I wish Whitley had gotten a new outfit. Crossing my fingers for next time. Neon's new look is super cute and a good upgrade from her last outfit. Flint looks really similar to his old design. Still looks good, I just wish it was a bit more distinct. 
Flint and Neon's teammates look so uninspired and boring, I can't even be bothered to remember they exist. Neo's outfit looks too cold and like it'd do a shitty job protecting anything. Her hair is pretty, but just covers up what she's doing during a fight. Seems like the priority for her new design was just make good fan service. Crow looks way better in this warm palette. Why is Blake's sleeves unzipped but then clamped together at the wrist? This looks dumb. The random bandana tied to Yang's leg is pretty goofy looking. Why not incorporate it into her design more naturally? I'm disappointed we don't get to see CL exclusively because I'd like to see her in a new outfit. Overall, there's a real lack of anime hair color in the designs these days. It makes the heroes stick out like giant neon thumbs. Stop being afraid of colors, home slice. Alright, so now that we've come to the end of the video, have I managed to nail down my opinion on the new designs? Kinda. I've figured out why it's been so hard to give an overall consensus on the new duds. It's because there's no running theme between them. I love some of the new redesigns, I hate others, and it's almost impossible to judge them as a group due to lack of cohesion. I suppose if I were to offer some advice for next time, I would say, narrow down a style for this world. Consistency can help with character design. Try to keep in mind the show's color motif, and maybe try to keep the girls in their designated color more. And to remember that the show is team-oriented, and as such, the teams should be designed to fit together. I think it should be mentioned that there are plenty of things I do like for these new looks. I'm glad that they veered away from all the unnecessary belts. I'm glad that giving all the girls boob windows doesn't seem to be a top priority anymore. I like that the kids are allowed to have more vibrant colors on them again. I just wish the rest of Remnant would follow suit. It feels like I'm being really negative, and I don't mean to be. I do really like some of these new outfits. Unfortunately, I think I'm unhappy with the majority of them. I still wouldn't call this round of designs a downgrade, though. Though, I think the production for this volume's new looks was just a bit unfocused. It's not a nightmare to look at these designs by any means, but I am more excited at the prospect of seeing them change as the kids grow over these next few volumes.